So modular building is a, a very clunky word for what ultimately is a very, very free tool within uh, Planet Coaster, uh, allowing you to create vast ways of the world exactly in the way that you would want them to be made and to integrate all the pieces of a park in a way that you would never have done before. You know, your guests will notice that and they'll appreciate that and it's going to make your guest retention slightly better because they're going to be enjoying just wandering around your park uh, in between going on rides and going to shops and things like that. Um, so your park will be noticeably different and more successful than one that's just barren and it's just rides and it's just shop shelves. Previously, it was, it was hard work to create um, scenery which was complex and interesting and varied. And already at this stage in Planet Coaster, creating buildings and integrating rides into buildings, you know, the kind of queues and the paths that people are going on, it's already incredibly open and free and, and fun to use. I think that's, that's the key is it's actually very fun to build stuff. You know, so traditionally we kind of talk about creators playing this game or, you know, are you a creator? Are you a manager? Are you, there's other things. It, it, in this, it teases all of those people to actually enjoy using the building tools. You might build your roller coaster first, you might build your scenery first, and you end up with these two separate items. And you look at them and your brain just makes this connection and goes, what if I made them part of the same thing? And then you might move that building, you might copy it, you might take part of it, rip it apart, and put it over different parts of that ride, rebuild it in a different way. And every time you look at your ride and reconsider it, you might change something. And you get to continually improve on what you've built in a very sort of piece by piece way. That is the, the big challenge. Any any planet coaster like game, those games that deal with lots of systems all want to build on top of each other and they're all user generated content. They the technically they're a very difficult challenge. So we have to try and keep things separate to, to make the actual development process sane, but we need the user to kind of appear to be seamlessly integrated. So I think the landscape editing tools are, are fantastic in, in their breadth, in the sense that um, like every user can use it on a basic level to kind of create some nice uh, undulations and hilly areas in their parks, or to um, just to create a little rocky outcrop or a little formation which to guests can walk under or coasters can go through. It's actually very, very easy to do that with our tools, but the other end of the scale, you know, I've seen people sculpting faces and, and skulls into you know, mountains using using the finest fidelity that you can get on, on the sculpting tools. So I think I think the exciting thing about that is that it's it's got that kind of um, breadth of usability from the very, very basic um, to the to the very complex and the and the, the time intensive. The landscape is a voxel generated field of loveliness. <laughs> it gets technical for you. Um, uh, and each voxel, the voxel scale is a meter, which in our game is actually, that's, that's really quite well detailed. Because then when you combine it with the uh, customization that you can add on with uh, the scenery pieces, um, and the fact that you can kind of build out these really interesting lumps of rock, you know, combinatorially, you can kind of add stuff together to build up big rock forms, and then push that into the landscape. You can sculpt to the scenery, you know, you can effectively adorn it. The, the, the landscape system, everything is building on top of it, but we do some really interesting things with landscape systems. So for example, when you put a path on the landscape, then it will conform to the landscape if, if it thinks that it's reasonable to put a path. So it may not let you put a path up a, a cliff edge, for example. But when we have that path down, we can then actually use the landscape system to put that path in a tunnel. So if we, as, we, as we pull the landscape over, the path will stay where it is and the volume of the path, i.e. the bit that you'd expect the people to walk through, will remain as a hollow, as a tunnel, but the landscape will sort of seamlessly blend over the top of it, so you can create a really amazing kind of structures, but with, with simple techniques as far as the user is concerned. So one of the beautiful things you can do with a, with a modular building system is the way that you can overlap local grids. So if I build my shop and, and next, next to it is some curious, broken, creepy old church, then I can have that thing sitting there on a local grid. Then I can intersect another grid and start building off an angle. So if I wanted to make it look like half it had fallen down or actually I've got a wall which is connecting around my spooky graveyard or whatever, I can do exactly that because I can intersect the local grids, which makes grid building simple, but actually makes the complexity quite, quite deep. So everything's with respect to that grid, but then I make another building and I can just rotate it and just put it next to it. And so I can have a whole 
curved row of buildings that fit nicely with my curved path and my curved coaster that wiggles through all of them. You know, you can, you can build some really beautiful stage spaces which are conforming to a local grid but actually look quite freeform. So you can, you can really kind of uh, create an artificial area as much as you can create an authentic area. Um, and that's really nice having that sort of ability to, to kind of chop up your park into different uh, uh, biomes within biomes and, and different zones. So you really feel like you're, you're taking your guests into different dimensions and different areas. But currently you can combine lamps, rocks, big landscape scenery of like, like a galleon. So let's say that if you wanted to, you could use all the little component rocks and make some huge hand of rock. And in that hand, you could put a galleon. And when you've made that, you can then set the whole thing, turn it into a blueprint, save it and share it, or just put it around your park. That's powerful. You can reuse scenery. So if you have two rides and you put a piece of scenery between the two of them, both those rides consider that scenery. So from a game perspective, you save money by building one scenery item that two rides have used. And if you built a roller coaster, you might go past that scenery on the same roller coaster multiple times. So you, there's a little more use out of it. And you have these high value items. So anything which is animated or, you know, um, you've made it out of these bigger, more expensive blocks that have a bigger impact on the guests. Um, and you manage to reuse those a lot, then you saved even more money. You've, you've been creative in how you've approached the simulation. And that's, that's something we want to reward.